well wishes for founding father. Border crossovers ex opposition leader. And golf pennant tees off. This is National MTV News with Dennis Orere. Good evening. Welcome to Monday's News. Police have arrested the Wabek Town Mayor Kennedy Kiak in Kundiawa Town for being in possession of an unlicensed firearm and cash of 80,000 kina. Chimbu Provincial Police Commander Horim Piamia told MTV News that police have set up roadblocks to allow the peaceful recount of the court-ordered Kandep open seat. PPC Piamia says police will arrest people of any suspicious moves that are conducted in Kundiawa until a candidate is declared. Kennedy Kiak was arrested and charged for being in possession of an unlicensed firearm, resisting police arrest and assaulting police officers. Kiak was also drunk when police arrested him. He was refused bail. The 80,000 kina has been confiscated by police. Kiak told police that the money belonged to a service provider in Chimbu. However, Chimbu PPC Horim Piamia told MTV News that Kiak was in Kundiawa to witness the judicial recount and is being treated as a suspect. Police have set up a number of roadblocks in Kundiawa town to allow for a smooth and violence-free recount. Meanwhile, the judicial recount is into its second day of counting. On the 11th of this month, the Electoral Commission had opened the container containing the boxes for the recount to proceed. The Supreme Court has ordered for the recount to be completed within one month and the court will declare a winner on early March. Acting Eastern End Commander ACP Joseph Tondop warned supporters to behave and allow the process to complete or police will use force to contain any situation. No one takes advantage of anything and disrupt the work of the Electoral Commission. I must say this, we will take whatever action that is necessary to deal with anyone who takes any advantage, especially the people outside and who, are, who, who might want to do anything. To, to stop the progress of the counter judicial recount. But Vasinata Yama, National MTV News, Mount Hagen. Opposition leader and Vanimo Green MP Belden Nama has criticized the government for not giving enough attention to the PNG Indonesian border. Nama confirmed that people living along the border are crossing into Indonesia on a regular basis despite lockdown restrictions under the Pandemic Act passed in Parliament last year. He says border protection is the responsibility of the national government and PNG remains at risk of a possible COVID-19 outbreak in its two land border provinces, Western and West Sipik. Now on the question of Speaking in a media conference last week, the opposition leader raised again concerns surrounding border protection between PNG and Indonesia. He says the lack of government presence along the border between Western and West Sipik is the main factor to why people are crossing into Indonesia despite travel restrictions under the Pandemic Act. And I see the people moving in and out freely. So government here can say that the border is closed. People on the ground are saying the border is not closed. With the two countries sharing the only land border in the region, the risk of a massive outbreak in COVID-19 remains high. And Nama says the pandemic alone should be an eye-opener for the Marapilet government to beef up border protection. Not only this government, but successive governments have paid little or no attention to border security. But more so this government because of the pandemic. Because this is a special case. And we would have expected that this government would have more attention to the border provinces so that we close all the borders completely. It has never been done. Nama maintained that border protection remains the responsibility of the national government and PNG must not be a spectator along the border. See, as we speak, Indonesians have built another border, just like in Butung. They call it another Batas. 
in Sco uh, next close to Scotia. We uh, there's a village on the other side called Scofro. They build a massive infrastructure, expecting that they will have access to Papua New Guinea for trade. And there is nothing, nothing on the ground in Scotia or in Bewani Station. Meanwhile, the West Sepik Provincial Health Authority has issued compliance orders in Vanimo Town after 13 frontline health workers were tested positive for COVID-19. This will see protocols being implemented under the new normal, which includes tougher penalties on those crossing the border. Stanley Ove Jr., National MTV News. Police will continue its investigations into the misuse of funds that belongs to the Medang Provincial Government come March. The investigation started last year. Assistant Commissioner of Police for Northern Command, Peter Guinness, says once the accounts open and funding is made available, officers will travel to Medang. Guinness says they are expecting more suspects who were implicated to be arrested, including a magistrate. Uh, there was a warrant of arrest that was taken against a particular uh, magistrate, but when the warrant was taken against this magistrate, the magistrate disappeared from Medang. And uh, it's gone. I don't know uh, if that is back in Medang or not, but uh, we will continue to find this particular gentleman and uh, he'll have to go to court to answer. You're watching National MTV News. More stories after the break. Stay with us. Welcome back to the news. A heads of government department competent enough to do their jobs that they are hiring consultants? Well, that is the concern from the government of the day with Public Service Minister Joe Sungi instructing the Department of Personnel Management to provide a report on the number of consultants engaged by heads of government departments. A letter from the Minister for Public Service was released last Friday to the Department of Personal Management instructing the Department Secretary to start collecting data on the number of consultants engaged by heads of department. The Minister says he understands there are some consultants engaged through the development budget for special projects, but there are other consultants engaged through the recurrent budget. The aim of collecting the data is to find out the number of consultants engaged, their terms of reference or the type of work they're engaged to do and the amount of money paid to them. Minister Sungi said this is basically to cut cost. The minister said consultants are doing the job for departmental heads when heads of agencies should be competent enough to perform their roles, otherwise they are getting paid for doing nothing. He pointed out that consultants should only be brought in for a short period of time with a specific task which should be clearly stated in the provisions of their terms of reference. The public service minister said the engagement of consultants must involve and enable transfer of skills to substantive holders of positions. Prime Minister James Marape has expressed similar concerns. Therefore, from the report compiled by the Department of Personal Management, Minister Sungi will take it up to NEC for the next course of action. Shamin Poreambeb, National MTV News. Well wishes from Papua New Guineans all over the country have flooded social media as the country's founding father, Grand Chief Sir Michael Somare, battles pancreatic cancer. Even from close friend and former colleague, Sir Julius Chen. New Island Governor Sir Julius Chan has extended prayers of hope to his friend, fellow founding father and senior statesman Sir Michael Somare, whom he learned today has been diagnosed with pancreatic cancer. Sir Jay last saw Sir Michael when they celebrated together the grand opening of the New Island Legislative in September last year. To the families and friends and the people of this country, we join all of you uh, praying for peace and tranquility um, and for the father of this nation. And as a friend, I was very pleased to have him with me here during the last Independence Day. And we commemorated 
Somari because of his close proximity in his early life with uh, with New Island, we named a road, Somari Avenue, up to Utu, Utu College, that was his school. So really, you know, we are concerned about uh, what we hear about his uh, condition, but um, I, I believe that um, uh, the maker uh, has reason for everything. And New Island uh, continue to keep in silence and hope for recovery so that we can share moments of togetherness for a, a little bit longer. Meanwhile, social media platform Facebook has been flooded with well wishes and prayers from Papua New Guineans all across the country and abroad. From the many well wishes, Joseph Nales said, this is the moment in time that we, one people, one nation, one country, must come together as one in prayer for our founding father. Our thoughts and prayers are with you, GC. Another social media user, Felix Munjin, said, with God's grace, you will rise up again once more from your sick bed like he did to you 10 years ago in Singapore. While another, a Moses Kamayal, said, instead of being said, let's celebrate the life of one of the most remarkable Papua New Guineans, Trupla Papa Blong PNG, who helped us achieve independence without any bloodshed or loss of lives. We look to the past to guide our future. Thank you, Grand Chief. These are among the thousands of well wishes and prayers to the Grand Chief and Lady Veronica after the family made the announcement yesterday that the Grand Chief is battling pancreatic cancer and is admitted at the Pacific International Hospital in Port Moresby. And Prime Minister James Marape also joins the thousands of Papua New Guineans calling on the nation to join him in a circle of prayer for the most senior couple, Lady Veronica Samare and Grand Chief Sir Michael Samare. Shamin Poreambeb, National MTV News. The recent mysterious contamination of Camp Welch River in Central Province has affected most villages located along the river. While initial tests and assessments have been conducted, nothing conclusive has been revealed by the authorities at this stage. To help provide relief assistance to the affected communities, members of Kalo Village living in Port Mosby have put together a disaster relief committee. A total of 4,000 kina was raised with the aim to engage water cartage services from Port Mosby to the village. Kalo village sits at the mouth of the Campwells River leading out to Hood Bay with an estimated population of 5,000 people and it is one of the villages that were affected following the Campwells River pollution. Following an emergency meeting by Kalo villages residing in Port Mosby, a working committee was formed to address the plight of their people. A total of 4,000 kina was raised to provide water cartage services from Port Mosby to the village. This is a step towards providing relief for their fellow villages. According to Kalo Natuna, Disaster Relief Committee Chairman, emergency response from local authorities has been quite slow. However, the central provincial government has stepped in to support the village with eight 5,000 litres water tanks. Individuals and business houses have come forward to support this cause, with cash totaling up to 8,000 kina, with WR carpenters donating over 20,000 kina worth of food supplies. The mysterious contamination of the Camp Wells River started over a week ago with so fish and other freshwater animal species dying. Several government teams have been dispatched upstream near inland Rigo as well as further downstream towards Kalo village to conduct test and assessment. So far nothing has been revealed at this stage as to the primary cause of the water pollution. There are over 20 villages located along this river system and over 25 schools. The Disaster Relief Committee says the disaster may pose further problems like food shortage and other health risks for impacted communities if the responsible authorities fail to respond on time. The Working Committee has launched an emergency appeal for any assistance as it is not clear at this stage as to when the contamination level would recede and life return to normal. Rayon Lakingu National, MTV News. 
Grow PNG, an Australian initiative, has launched a land access guide to manage agricultural development of the land at the Makam Valley in Morobe. The guide aims to strengthen partnerships between landowners, farmers, agribusinesses and investors by addressing challenges mainly to do with land disputes. These parties will be able to reach durable land agreements for agribusinesses through the new guide. Grow PNG's Land Access Guide was launched last week in the presence of the landowners and farmers of Makam Valley in Morobis, Makam District. The guide aims to address customary land access, which has been a major obstacle for resource development in the country. Grow PNG aims to use existing customary land legislations through this guide to achieve its bigger version of encouraging more investment in the Makam Valley. The company's working group coordinator, um, Ruti Kusak, uh, explains some of the important chapters of the guide. Um, investor negotiation is one of the chapters in the book as well. Another important chapter in the book is the smallholder um, um, farming models that can um, help the farmers to or the landowners to know that um, there's other options as well. The guide is the first output of the Land Access Working Group under Grow PNG. Grow PNG is a non-for-profit company funded by the Australian government. It has received some support from the Morabe Provincial Government through a baseline survey of marketing and household income problems in the Makam Valley by the University of Technology. A woman who was instrumental in the establishment of Grow PNG and president of Women in Agriculture, Maria Linimbi, said the guide will help landowners choose the right investors for the land. This is the land access guide. This is the direct You to the right land, you can business with you. Yimi planti tan yimi sabon ago linka kwanta roman na tan on ka mo kwanti yimi ka mo se me ba tok tok ya yimi go na orbita project ya punda the australian government on the other hand is supporting the project in its effort to revive economic stability following the covid-19 pandemic and with the economic impacts that we've all seen that have come as a result of the covid-19 pandemic australia is committed to work to increase food production and strengthen linkages between smallholder farmers and markets to improve food security and boost exports. Meanwhile, the next step now following the launching of the guide is to conduct awareness on the guide through Makam Valley. Shalin Eri, National MTV News, Lay. Founder of IBS University, Sir Mick Nades, has expressed concerns on PNG's economy as well as views on business education in PNG's higher education sector. Speaking recently after passing over the baton of chairman for the university to his son, Johan Nades, during IBS University Day on February 16, he shared his views on the business sector in the country. Semik Nades managed an accounting firm, Nades & Associates, which began in 1986. And at that time, it was realized that there were only nine certified professional accountants in Papua New Guinea. And so the need arose for training more people to become professional accountants. That's how the formerly known Institute of Business Studies came into being. But 10 years into accounting practice, Semik Nades heard a voice which resulted in him having a new vision. So what happens in, when I turned 50 in 1996, going backwards, um, I heard someone whispering in my ears, uh, some of you may believe it, uh, um, that uh, forget about your accounting, educate Papua New Guineans. And that's when I drop uh, my accounting practice and handed over all the files to my late uh, partner, Tenzing Tawale, uh, and uh, fully focused on developing IBS. Having worked in an accounting firm in Australia and moving to PNG in 1976 to work as an accountant for a huge octedi mine for over four years, 
Mr. Nades had this to say regarding PNG's resource sector during the exclusive interview with MTV News. But, uh, although Papua New Guinea blessed with a lot of resources, it is my personal view that uh, in not much uh, the benefits passed on to the average Papua New Guinean, uh, let alone the, uh, where the mi mining projects are. Uh, so it is probably uh, in the uh, good direction the current Prime Minister taking uh, that uh, negotiating with the project developers for more benefits. Uh, but, uh, okay, you may be lucky to get the more benefit. Uh, there's no guarantee uh, that those benefits will actually uh, flow through to average Papua New Guineans. Semik Nades believes in Papua New Guinea's enormous potential in the agriculture industry. Uh, since I arrived first time in Papua New Guinea in 76, I always felt that we have got a lot of lands. And uh, I would like to see Papua New Guinea as an agriculture country. Of course, we have got a lot of resources. So you get the resource benefits and invest in agriculture. Having contributed to business education in the higher education sector in the country for over 30 years now, Semik Nade says there needs to be proper collaboration between educational institutions and industrial partners to really meet the demands and produce what is required. What kind of graduates uh, they are looking for from the universities? So that interaction is not there between the universities and the uh, industry. Uh, or out there. So we will be launching shortly an industry partnership uh, uh, through the surveying of uh, asking the companies what kind of graduates they are looking for and so that we can incorporate uh, their uh, views. New Minister for Public Service Joe Sungi made his first official visit to the Pacific Institute of Leadership and Governance last Friday. During the welcome ceremony, concerns faced in the public service sector were raised by the minister. Pacific Institute of Leadership and Governance was privileged to have the new minister on their campus last Friday. Sungi commended the institute as a training ground for aspiring leaders of this country. When a public servant retires after serving the country, what, what, how long does it take for the finish pay? or for yourself to be processed. Those are the things that we want to do. We want to do in public service, we need, we need to cut down the time of waiting. The turnaround time should be shorter. Housing is a main issue public servants tend to encounter whilst in the field. Sungi said housing should be a condition of employment regardless. How you find the house, how you stay, where you are, you come, it's a problem. No. Housing should become a condition of employment. If you do not have a house for that position, for goodness sake, don't create a, don't advertise a position. Sungi added, retirement age should be at age 50 or 60 to allow retiring public servants to spend time with their families or to start their own business and also to give opportunities to the young unemployed graduates. We may have to look at, we can leave it at 65 as the, uh, probably the compulsory retirement age. We may have to reduce it down to 60 so that you can give enough time for the public servant who served the country to have time for himself or herself, for the family. It's no point leaving a public servant almost dying to come and get a finished pay. There's no time for them to get a finished pay. What, is, what, is, what are they going to do with a finished pay? The finished pay is supposed to be given earlier so that they can have enough time to either build a house or to come up with some SME project and businesses. So we should be critical, uh, carefully looking at the real way of life of Papua New Guinea. We should not be adopting anything from outside. He aims to implement new strategies to alleviate these issues. After Sungi's official speech, he was given a tour around the campus. Esther Tailam, National MTV News. And now looking at the Nest Fund market report, Dakina closed unchanged at 0.2850 US dollars in the interbank market. At Bank South Pacific, Yokina will buy 0.2775 US dollars, 0.3476 Australian dollars, 0.2206 Euro and 28.61 Japanese yen. Looking at commodity prices at New York close, gold is trading higher, coffee and copper closed lower, cocoa closed higher, crude oil is trading higher, palm oil and copper closed higher. And on the stock market, the Dow Jones closed higher, 
The ASX 200 is trading lower and the All Ordinaries is trading lower. Two Kai Sports. Welcome to Trukai Sports. The Kumul Telecom Holdings 2021 golf pennant teed off over the weekend with over 10 teams at the Royal Port Moresby Golf Course in the nation's capital. Champions from the last pennant, Starland Dragons, claimed the first round of the 2021 KTH pennant. KTHL pennants teed off the 2021 season here at the Port Mosby Royal Golf Course. Teeing off in the first hole, Team Telecom against DHL. Yeah, yeah, we're playing the same <laughs> Telecom PNG winning the match of the first tee, scoring 4 3. DHL not disappointed after the loss, with one of its players with an individual score of 7 5, claiming the best player of the match. Following matches saw so Skalmiru Pasi versus More Than Oil teeing off in the 10th hole. More Than Oil winner with a score of 4 and 3. 8.45 a.m. this morning. East West Transport versus Aeon. The winner of that round was Aeon with a 4 and a half win. T. Starland Dragons versus KCH Tigers. The winner today was Starland Dragons, 5 and a half. The final team of the 15th tee today was Elamotos versus BSP and Elamotos came out with the win with 5-2. The best player of the first round of the 2021 season, East West Transport's Ben Wong taking his spoils with a bit of love from the rivals. Winding up the first round, naming rights sponsor Kumul Telecom Holdings were pleased with the turn up. Telecom's head of commercial, Silas Matoli, states the event is all about building networks. I have a lot of uh, teams that are our customers as well, like Aeon, Ella Motors, uh, BSP, those are our major customers. So from our end, we'd like to be more closer to them as much as possible. Uh, you know, we have a lot of uh, meetings and official uh, get together, but uh, this is more, uh, you know, unofficial. It's uh, outside of office, and it's a very uh, strategic place, I believe, to further build our relationship uh, outside of the office as well. The second round of the 2021 KTH golf pennants is set for the 14th of March, which is two weeks away. Meantime, it was all about friends, fun, and a good cold beer in the sun. Kilawani, Trukai Sports. There have been successful PNG Australia sport exchanges funded by the Australian government's Pacific Oz Sports Program, which was announced in 2018 in the lead-up to APEC. On Sunday, the first strategic partnership under the Pacific Oz Sports Program was signed the first of its kind in the Pacific. This partnership brings together the Australian government, PNG RFL, the new Hunters entity, and Queensland Rugby League to grow and develop the game of rugby league in PNG for women and for men. Celebrating the power of sport, bringing us together through the PNG Oz partnership. Australia has always supported Papua New Guinea in sports. Rugby league has been at the pinnacle of the two countries' partnerships when it comes to sports. And on Sunday was no different. A lot of recognition has been given to rugby league athletes, both men and women playing in Australia. And that recognition of rugby league is heading into new heights. A first of its kind strategic partnership was formalized on Sunday under the Pacific Oz Sports Program. This power partnership is designed to usher in a new era for the SPPNG Hunters as a high performance organization and grow the women's game with a view to eventually having a women's team play in an Australian competition. The Pacific Oz Sports Program has been in existence since 2018 and was announced in the lead up to APEC. The Pacific Oz Program has been around for several years now. That's what enabled us to support um, the PNG team to go to the Samoa Pacific Games in 2019, the Orchids to play in the Sydney nines we're supporting the PNG Olympics team which we hope will be able to go to Tokyo for the Olympic Games so today's signing is actually the first such partnership we have had anywhere in the Pacific for the Pacific Oz partnership the first time we partnered with a local organization that's the PNGRL 
together with QRL, the PNG government, the Australian government and Queensland Rugby League. Prime Minister of Papua New Guinea, James Marape, was grateful of the partnership which will help the SPPNG hunters and of course help the game of rugby league prosper in the country. Partnership at the highest level with the Australian government, uh, the Queensland uh, state government, uh, supported strongly by the local Australian mission here in Port Mosby and PNG. Uh, we've now been able to advance our uh, relationship and especially in the sporting fraternity to a level where we now building team, assessing them in Australia for them to participate. That is a pathway for uh, Papua New Guineans who want to be in the field of sports. Marape did add that this signing will also open up new opportunities for other sports apart from rugby league heading into the future. That is a pathway for uh, Papua New Guineans who want to be in the field of sports. Not just rugby league, but hopefully this will now enable us to migrate into other sports. As I was saying earlier, the uh, sports is no longer seen from our government perspective as just a leisure activity. We've deliberately packed sports with the higher education ministry uh, to ensure sports also become a career option for kids who come out of our school system uh, who are born with the natural acumen or propensity towards uh, excelling in sports as a career option. Fidelis Sukina, Trukai Sports. Final round of the Port Moresby Corporate Touch Precision concluded yesterday after three rounds of competition. Games coordinator Jerry Borg stated as the preseason ends, proper season is set to kick off. Port Moresby's Corporate Touch competition had its final rounds of the preseason over the weekend, hosting 22 corporate teams at the Murray Barracks Oval in the nation's capital. With an increase in interest in the corporate arena throughout the preseason games, the season proper is set to host more new teams on board. We were open for the last uh, preseason games. We were just open for any teams to you know, uh, put their hands up to uh, take part in the competition. And we had 16 last Sunday, but today we, we registered 22 clubs. So we're looking at a big competition uh, this, uh, this season. The matches kicked off with the junior divisions, open men's and women's, and mixed and masters divisions respectively. With COVID-19 affecting the 2020 season, the return to the field for many of the teams has been slow. We, ha we, had, we had a big number of newcomers too, but not like uh, this season, because we had a, a year off uh, due to COVID-19. So uh, this, this year was a bit relaxed and uh, so many corporate companies have, uh, have shown the interest to take part in the competition. With the proper season set to kick off on the 28th of February 2021, Jerry says the newcomers this year will be the teams, giving the old dogs a run for their money. Existing teams uh, for the Pules, uh, um, we have uh, senior clubs like Parapella, uh, that's uh, funded by Funeral Home, uh, um, on-track solutions or on-track tribes, also BSP um, and SEPA coming up to uh, we got Kutmo and all these other new clubs too who uh, joined us uh, the last season. Uh, they're coming up a bit, you know, tough. To, so they're going to give a good competition for the, uh, to the old guns. With the National Touch Federation setting its eyes on the PNG Games and the National Championships, the 2021 season proper is set to finish early. It is expected to end in the month of July, not past July, because uh, after that, uh, TFPNG, you know, has some other that's uh, competition or calendars uh, in place for us to go by that. So. Kilawani, Trukai Sports. That story wraps up Trukai Sports, the weather report for the next 24 hours after these messages. Trukai Sports. <laughs> Trukai Sports. This weather update is proudly brought to you by MoniPlus, with you always. Weather forecast for tonight and tomorrow in the southern region, Port Moresby, possible rain showers and thunder, Daru, partly cloudy with evening rain drizzles, Kerama, a few showers and drizzles, Alotau, partly cloudy with a shower or two, 
Popondetta mostly fine and partly cloudy with evening shower or two. The weather update was proudly brought to you by MoniPlus. With you always. And that's the news, sports and weather for Monday 22nd of February 2021. Pleasant viewing. Be safe. Good night.